the phrase as we forgive those who sin against us in the Lord's prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen in Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 to 15 we read for if you forgive others the wrong they have done your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others then the wrongs you have done will not be forgiven by your father does the above passage mean that god's forgiveness is conditioned on the required return that we should forgive others first before God can forgive us? No, this is not the meaning of the passage. If this were then, it is not different from the attitude of the Pharisee. God, you have to forgive me because I have forgiven others. Then God's mercy is not unlimited after all. The key to understanding this passage is Matthew chapter 18 verses 23 to 35. The parable of the heavily indebted servant who was totally forgiven because he asked it from his master. After being forgiven, he did not forgive his fellow servant who owed him a smaller amount. In Matthew 18 verses 32-33 we say, You worthless slave, he said, I forgave you the whole amount you owed me just because you asked me to. You should have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you. The message of the parable is this. If we ask for forgiveness without condition, then we should also forgive others and give forgiveness to someone who asks us for forgiveness without condition. In Luke chapter 6, 37, we read, Do not judge others, and God will not judge you. Do not condemn others and God will not condemn you. Forgive others, and God will forgive you. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 2, we hear, Whatever measure you deal out to others will be dealt back to you. Our experience of God's forgiveness should make us have only one attitude toward God and our neighbors. Love. If we do not forgive our neighbors, then it is a sign that we have not fully asked the Father's forgiveness and we have thus made ourselves incapable of receiving the unconditional forgiveness of God. If we have really had the experience of God's forgiveness and His mercy at work in our sinful life, then we can forgive our neighbors unconditionally. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, we read, If He does not love his brother whom he has seen it cannot be that he loves God whom he has not seen 
And in Matthew chapter 5 verse 7 we hear how blessed are those who show mercy. Mercy will be shown to them. If we ask for forgiveness and receive it without reservation or condition, then we must also forgive someone who asks us for forgiveness. In Luke chapter 6 verse 36, we hear, Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. We must forgive 70 times 7, that is, without limits, because this is how God forgives us. In Matthew chapter 18 verses 21 to 20, 22, we hear, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, if my brother keeps on sinning against me, how many times do I have to forgive them? Seventy times? No, not seven times, answered Jesus, but seventy times seven. We have no right to ask God's forgiveness if we do not want to forgive our neighbors. In Matthew 18, 22, and 23, we are reminded again, You worthless slave, he said, I forgive you the whole amount you owed me just because you asked me to. You should have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you. And in Colossians 3, verse 13, St. Paul said, You must forgive as the Lord forgave you. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us is a petition to God to free us from the evils of the soul and of the body, of this life and of the life to come. We are sinners. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, we hear, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Thus, if we are sinners, we should humble ourselves before God. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, If we confess our sins, He who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This petition should inspire hope in us that God will forgive us if we are sorry for our sins and open to ongoing conversion. In Matthew 18 verse 32 we hear, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. If we are contrite and confess our guilt, we shall receive mercy whenever we ask God. In Psalm 32 verse 5 we hear, Then I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. The sacrament of confession imparts sanctifying grace to the soul and the guilt of mortal sin and eternal punishment 
is taken away. In John chapter 20 verses 22 to 23, Jesus said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The guilt of temporal punishment is more or less taken away according to the dispositions of the penitent. The use of indulgence can also take away the temporal punishment due to sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.